All right, I've been using both Windows and Mac OS for more than a decade of my life. So let's compare 41 of the most basic features to see what you're giving up by switching from Windows to Mac or vice versa. Okay, starting simple with files and documents. On Mac, the Finder runs the show. And oh boy, Apple has made sure it's as clean as possible. At least by default. Sure, we can pin our most used folders in the favorite sidebar, and we've got a toolbar with viewing and sorting options, a share menu, and a search feature. But that's all stuff we know from Windows just as well. Just that File Explorer kind of feels like Finder on steroids. It's jam-packed with features right out of the box, like multiple tabs, a path bar, plus file size and storage info. In Finder, those features must be customized. We can dive into the view menu and also opt for multiple tabs, add a path bar, or see storage info in a status bar. Sure, but File Explorer gives us a few more geeky extras, which some would call essentials, like when copying files, seeing the actual file transfer speeds in real time. Good luck finding those, Mac OS. That's right, we just have a single stripped down progress bar with the time remaining. But just check out your right click menu for a sec. Okay, we can copy a file's path, archive it, or directly set an image as the wallpaper. What's your point? You see, here's where it gets interesting. We've got quick actions, so without installing any apps, we can merge documents into a single PDF, convert picture file types, and compress them, or even one click, remove the background from any image. The point being, that's where the finder just feels like a refreshing take on file management. And the same goes for the quick look feature, which Windows still lacks. Hitting the spacebar on any document instantly previews it without opening it in any app. And this feature goes stupidly far. I mean, from copying text, trimming videos, to even spitting around a 3D file right inside of the quick look window. Okay, but having decent file management is one thing. Having a PC that smartly searches your entire system, that's what takes productivity to another level. And both Windows and Mac OS actively encourage this using their prominently placed Windows Search and Spotlight Search features. Spoiler alert, one is way better than the other. Both can easily find your documents, both can quickly open apps, or even calculate 153 times 4, show the current time in Japan, or convert 72 US dollars to pounds. But here's the thing, because Windows Search relies heavily on web results more than Spotlight Search, the latter is quicker and often works offline. But still, both let you find settings, start a web search, and find images from web results. But honestly, Spotlight Search does a few things better. Thanks to the tight integration of macOS and its apps, you can describe an image and get matching pictures from your own photo library, track any airplane, or look for a contact and one-click message, email, or call them. All things you can't really do using Windows Search. Okay, that may be, but that's quite an easy take. The debate really starts to heat up when it comes to window management and multitasking. It all starts with this simple task. Closing a window quits the app. On Mac? Yeah, on Mac, you can't have an app open without any windows on screen. But wait, there's logic to this. Even when the last window is closed, you can still open a new one from the menu bar. To actually quit an app and all its windows, it's quit from the menu bar, or Command and Q. But most people don't know those, that if an app can't have more than one window, closing it also quits the app, just like on Windows. Wait, there's more. We can simply maximize a window using the maximizing button. This button isn't the same on Mac. The green button throws a window into full screen. The idea being to work without desktop distractions. Plot twist, I hate this because I can't open another window on top and always have to swipe back over to the desktop. To quickly maximize a window the Windows way, you can hold down Option and double click any corner to expand. I know, seems a bit tedious. Which also goes for Windows snapping. I mean, this has been on Windows since Windows 7 back in... 2009 and it still hasn't arrived on the Mac? Yeah, Apple has just said, 
No. But hey, you can often right click the green button and move a window to the left side or right side of the screen. That's about it. I'm too dreaming of a future with native window snapping on macOS. But even wait, and what's up with the Alt Tab shortcut to quickly switch between windows? We've got Command Tab on the Mac and it feels like it should be the same except it isn't. It's only used to hop from one app to another and not between specific windows. Once you're in an app, you can then toggle between its windows using Command and the tilde key. The most direct comparison to Alt Tab though is pressing the F3 key to open Mission Control. But you've got that on Windows too with Task View. But there are at least half a dozen ways to multitask on Mac OS. I'm not sure that's an advantage. Including one that Windows doesn't offer. Take Stage Manager. It lines up window previews on one side and puts whatever you're working on front and center. The point being is that you can focus on one or two windows at a time with a clean desktop while still having quick access to all your stuff. Uh, okay, yeah, whatever, but even those fancy multitasking features don't help if macOS doesn't support the apps you rely on. Sure, that's a point for Windows, it supports more apps, and it makes sense just looking at the market share of both. But still, this issue is sometimes overstated. It really boils down to what you want to use it for. Light office work, both perfectly handled Excel, Word and PowerPoint, and Apple adds its free numbers, pages and keynote. If you want to edit photos, macOS might be the better choice because of consistently color accurate displays and a free close to professional photo editing app. But no doubt, if you're an engineer, it's a completely different story, not even mentioning stuff like gaming. Now, speaking of apps on Windows, we've got the Microsoft Store and we've got the App Store. Easy, safe, and they keep everything in one spot, like app updates and managing subscriptions. But app stores don't get that much love from developers, so on both Mac and Windows, we can download software from anywhere else. Here, it's straightforward. You download the .exe file, and go through the installation steps. On Mac, it's slightly more confusing. Most apps download as a disk image from which you can copy over the software to your applications folder and then eject it just like any normal physical disk. Different methods, same outcome. Installing apps is one thing, but uninstalling them is also quite helpful. On Windows, we can uninstall apps directly from the settings. Super simple. On Mac, this is most often a thing of dragging and dropping an app into the trash. Or for some larger programs, using their own uninstaller. Okay, we've done the big basics. File, window and app management. But what about all those tiny features you just take for granted every single day? Like the delete key on any Windows PC, letting us forward delete text. Oh yeah, on Mac, we've only got the backspace. To forward delete, we need to press the function and backspace keys. Hmm. We can move a file on Windows with Ctrl X and paste it with Ctrl V. On macOS, Command X only works for text and not files. To move a file, it's either drag and drop or Command C to copy and then Option, Command and V to move. On the same note, if you enable it in the settings, Windows has a clipboard history with the option to pin some text you need to paste often. No clipboard history on macOS. But Command, Shift and 5 gets up the screenshot toolbar on macOS, letting us capture the full screen, a single window or just a cropped part. On Windows, the snipping tool does the same job with the addition of a freeform screenshot option. Creative. Screen recordings also work on both Windows and Mac OS. Okay, next. Buggy apps on Windows can be closed using Control, Shift, Escape. And here in the Task Manager, we can force quit any running application. On Mac, we force quit a non-responsive app by right-clicking it in the dock and holding down Option. Or we can press Command, Option, Escape and use the force quit menu to do the exact same thing. Windows helps us manage storage space here in the settings with cleanup recommendations and shortcuts to delete documents and apps. macOS takes this one step further, it's slightly more detailed and we have the option to remove apps and files right from here in settings sorted by size or date last used. Now like basically every Apple product, Macs come with Siri 
meaning we can start playing music, set reminders, do calculations, or call contacts using voice commands. Quite useful, but most times a mouse and keyboard get the job done faster. There's no voice assistant on Windows 11, only voice access, but it's more an accessibility feature. Moving on, Windows 11 offers built-in backup to OneDrive, saving files, apps, and settings. There are other solutions for backups to an external drive, but none of them are as simple as Apple's approach to backups. With the native Time Machine feature, you can set up any of your external drives as a backup location, and when connected to your Mac, it will automatically copy your entire disk. Think of it as taking snapshots of your computer. At any time, you can then browse the backups in this time traveling interface and see the finder exactly as it was on any given day, and then restore any deleted file. Okay, now that we've covered those quick everyday features, let's shift our focus to another big one, being customization. Because that's where Windows and Mac share a lot of common ground, at least up to a certain point. Mac OS has a baked in dark mode option, as well as Windows, with a few inconsistencies. Both Mac and Windows let us change accent colors throughout the entire system, which Windows takes a big step further though with complete color themes. The dock too can be customized, so just for example, automatically hiding it, adding some fancy animations, or moving it to the right side or left side of the screen. We can also automatically hide the taskbar on Windows, but Fancy animations are quite limited, as well as the option to move it to either side. But what really sets it apart from the dock is the start menu. And this one's super useful and super customizable too. Sure, in macOS we've already got the non-comparable launchpad. It only shows apps and the only customization option here is to create folders. On the desktop though, you can now natively add widgets, but support is quite limited and I personally rarely use them. Okay, up to this point, it's been all fun and games. But if you then bring third-party apps into the game, macOS falls far behind in terms of visual customization. I mean, if you want to, you can get interactive wallpapers that react to the movement of your cursor, or ironically even make Windows look like macOS. Although there are a few apps that can make macOS look more like Windows, like even bringing the Alt-Tab shortcut to the Mac. If you want to know where to get this one, plus nine more completely free macOS apps, you should watch this video next. All right, I will see you there. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day.